tonight we have arguably one of the greatest fighters of all time and no argument in him definitely being one of the greatest defensive fighters of all time. This guy had a unique style, shook up boxing in the 90s and 2000s. Everybody, please welcome Ronald Winky Wright. Let's dive into this. I'm here right now, homie. Oh, shit. Uh, I don't, you know, I ain't know how to use that. I don't be all on that shit like that. You got in, though. I got in. I had to figure it out. I had to figure it out. <laughs> Have you what ever about? used Instagram Live before? Nope. Not like that. <laughs> I'm going on Instagram Live, man. That's for these kids. That's for these kids, right? Yep. Mm. What's going on? <clears throat> it's good. Shit, it's good. Where you, where you, Florida? Yeah, I'm in Florida. But is that where you stay ninety percent of the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I live in Florida, man. I know that. I know that you're from Florida. What part yeah. of you have? Huh? My my son lives in Florida. Oh yeah, what part? Jackson. Up there by where? Jackson. Oh, Jacksonville. Yeah, up there by uh by by Georgia. Yeah, Pensacola, all that. He in Jacksonville. He at the top of the state. I'm in the middle of the state by Tampa, St. Pete. We actually waiting for uh, Briggs, Shannon Briggs to come in. I know he's out there. He's in Miami. Yeah, Shannon in Miami, ain't he? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Is it is it more expensive in Miami? Than yeah, up? yeah, yeah, yeah. Miami expensive, but uh, it's getting expensive down here now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Saying, Yo, Florida. Did you did you see that um the Canelo fight? Yeah, I saw. What are your what are your what's your take? I'm saying it was a good little fight, dude. Dude, dude came and gave him a good little fight. You know, Canelo did what he had to do, bring him down, and just caught him. You know. What do you think about him not coming out? Because I know he's getting a lot of criticism for it. Man, listen, man. People that don't box or never been in that situation, you can't say what what you would do because you ain't never did it. You know. What <laughs> what if he broke that man eye socket, hey, that's a painful ass. That's painful, man. So. You know, it ain't never happened to me. You know, I was lucky. I never got stopped, but you know, it happens. And shit, if that shit hurt like that, I'm, I'm, hey, you gotta stop. If you want to continue to fight, you know what I'm saying? He, mm -hmm. he live for another day. That's his first loss, ain't it? A whole lot more than just the fight. It's his yeah. eye. Yeah, yeah. You can mess up your eye forever. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah, man. Um. Yeah, he, he apparently apparently he fractured his his shit in like four or five different places. It's bad. Yeah, oh, boom. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's you know, he did right. You know, I think it, he did right to stop the fight. You know, because like I said, you got to live the fight another day. You you try to keep man, it up. Imagine hard. Imagine how hard Canelo was punching to crack that guy's orbital bone. Yeah, he just caught him perfect. You know, Canelo throw some good punches, man. Hey, you know. I got to give it to Canelo. Canelo, you know, he's doing a lot of shit for a kid that's only 30 years old. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, he, he going up fighting everybody doing this. It's some fights that's out there that I think he should take that, that he may not want to take at that time. But, you know, he doing like what he got to do, giving the fans what they, you know, I think, you know, a lot of people want to see him, you know, one of the Charlo brothers or him, you know, Andres, him, uh, uh, what's that? Oh, Benavides, mm. uh, yeah, yeah. Now who? Which I <laughs> Benavides a beast. People can say what they want about the kid. He might can't make weight dinner, but he's a beast. He can punch. He can box. Mm -hmm. He got quick hands. So you know, it, it, it's a lot of kids. It shots out there for him to fight. But you know, they know they know what to do. They you know they market themselves. They pick the fights that's good for him. And you know, it is what it is. I mean, hey, you know, he got a great career. Kid, you know, fighting. You know, winning. Man, mm -hmm. I take my hat off to him. You ever, you ever, you ever um sparred him? Who? Canelo, back in the day. Nah, nah, man. I'm listen. I'm shit. He probably was a kid when I was fight. You know, yeah. I was done. I was we, done, man. Ten years on him. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, yeah but he, he turned he turned pro at like I think fifteen, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah. I ain't, nah they, I ain't. they they can't be pro as fifteen in America. 
Yeah, yeah. Exactly. He turned pro. He did turn pro. I but, think he turned pro at 15. But, he fought in Mexico to about 16 or 17, and then he got to come over here. But like I said, he, he a hell of a fighter, man. I take nothing away from him. Who do, you think, um, who do you think would have the best chance of beating him right now? You think Benavidez? Right now, hey. Benavidez is tough for anybody, so I, I want to see. You really want to throw some fights out there for Benavidez in there, and you are gonna get a hell of a fight. That kid, that kid, tough kid, man, tall, can punch, mm -hmm. quick hands. You know what I'm saying? And he he, he gonna go get it. He wanted to knock out too, so that's what him and him and him and Canelo would be a hell of a fight. Um, have you seen um what's his face Berlanga? No. Nah. Jeremy, can you hear us? No, nah, we can't hear you, Jeremy. You yeah, muted? Did, did you hit mute, Jeremy? You put mute, mute, unmuted, man. Text him, man. Text him. <laughs> Jeremy, what? <laughs> he's, he's like a caveman. <laughs> Jeremy, Un leave and come back in. Leave and come back. Yeah. Clown. Um, um, he, yeah, he muted himself. Yeah, he'll come back in a second. Um, so yeah, so so, what'd you say about Berlanga? Have you seen him fight? No, nah, I never seen him fight. Oh, you you know what I'm talking about? No. Nah. Oh, okay. Edgar Berlanga, he he was 18 and oh, if I'm not mistaken, 18 all 18 fights, first round knockouts. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You talking about the kid, yeah, he's Spanish kid. Super middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll he a good puncher, young, he good, strong fighter. But once again, that's when you hitting somebody and they ain't hitting you back. So, you know, where he have where he have that kind of that force against somebody like Canelo who he know gonna hit back and hit back hard and know what to do. So I take nothing away from that kid. That kid, uh he knocking out everybody. He's strong fighter. Mm -hmm. He just went to distance with the last cat he just fought. I saw that. Yeah. Kid. And the yeah. cat gave him a good little boxing, but he he hurt the cat, kept you know knocking him down. But the cat was in there. The cat wasn't going to quit. He came out mm -hmm. to fight, and he gave him what he won. But yeah, it's levels to 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 the to that boxing game, man. You know, every, you know, you get them kids. Some of them that got that big punch in and, and can't really box. But that Rolanga, he said like he can box and punch. So you know, we'll see when he get into a better opposition. I um. I was talking with, we were talking with Hassan Rahman a while back, and we were talking about our number one pound for pound, right? And my number one pound for pound is Canelo. Hassan got kind of furious. He goes, look, you can't put somebody pound for pound number one who got caught doing steroids. So, and then I've heard people talk about that he hit so hard that he must be on something. I mean, do you agree with that? I don't know. I, you know, I, I stay out of stuff that I don't know nothing about. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to put no judgment on nobody. I don't know nothing about you know, Canelo, Canelo, um, he, he looked good. If he got caught doing steroids, that's 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 a messed up thing. You know what I'm saying? Because this sport should be fought on even playing fields. You know what I'm saying? Nobody should be taking no <coughs> that they give him a um, advantage. You know, Would your you skill. Think, good. I mean, Jeremy, I remember you told me one time. I think you said that because a lot of fighters will, t will, will test positive and then be like, "Oh, I didn't know it was this, it was that." Do you think that a fighter really doesn't know? Nope. Oh, you say you know, no, they don't know, or no, they know, you know. No, they. I say yes, they know. Oh, okay. What do you think, Wink? Yeah, I, I, I shit, I'm pretty sure they know, cause you know, I know I would know. You know what I'm saying? It's not like they, <laughs> it's not like they're gonna go to sleep and somebody shoot them, shoot them while they're sleeping. Right. You know? yeah, yeah, that's true too. That's true too. <laughs> but you know, they're trying to say that you know sometimes that you know your your people may give you some things that you really don't know what's in it, but you should because, you know, they testing it for it. So, you know, you know, you might have a strength and conditioning person or whoever do your, 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 your diet, your nutritionist, and then they may give you vitamins or something. You think they're just regular vitamins in it and they got something in it. And you know what I'm saying? You can, you can test positive. So I don't know. I saw, <laughs> um, I saw you doing this thing. You and Tarver, uh, can you tell us about that? They think you're training people. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we uh so the Gronks uh gave me a toggle call and said they was gonna be boxing uh Jake Paul and uh they, they want us to come over there and and, 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 and train them in 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 one day. You know what I'm saying? So it was <laughs>
So we already knew what was going to happen. So, you know, but I, like I told the Gronks, I take my hat off to them, them kids. They got in that ring and none of them ain't boxed before. So they got in that ring and, 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 and Jake was trying to knock their head off. You see what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying, Jeremy, for somebody that ain't got to get in that ring and to jump in there with somebody that know how to fight. Oh, that's a tough thing. Where the fuck did he go? He just left again. Yeah, um, again he'll come back in. I guess seven. Did uh, could could Jake Paul fight? Well, he look he look he looked nice. You know, what I'm saying he threw some good punches. Once again, you know the the puncher bag don't hit back. So <laughs> you can look like you want until you get in there with somebody that's gonna hit you back. Nobody calls me ever, and now everybody's calling me today. Uh, <laughs> your phone's ringing. That's why you keep going out. Yeah, that's why you keep going out, man. But yeah, yeah. like I was telling him. Like I'm telling them, uh, Jeremy, you know, everybody went, you know, the mitts, I, I, you, you get a lot of fighters that look great on the mitts until they get in front of somebody that can hit them back. So, you know, I think Jay Paul got a lot of skill, though. I, I, he did look sharp throwing his punches. He looked in shape. But, you know, uh, I don't think he's ready for a real boxer. You know what I'm saying? Man, but them, them kids, they, they haven't been conditioned for a war. They ain't gonna do that. Yeah, yeah, but he, but, but he was, he was in shape. He was in shape. But like I said, once again, that's, that's, that's for cats that can't hit them back or go to the body or do what they need to do, jab them, you know, mix it up. So we'll yeah, see. I don't think any of these these YouTube fighters or or these people who are you know um, thinking they can do, they're all like mitt men to me, like those guys that can do the mitts all good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Can't fight. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. Anybody, if anybody can play patty cake, shit, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That yeah, you know, you know, Floyd started doing that patty cake thing, and everybody wanted to do it. But like I said, I know it, it's only one Floyd Mayweather. So you know, I, yeah. I heard somebody say recently that they think that Pat that the mitts does zero for a fighter or almost zero. Do you guys agree with that? Like it you doesn't know, do that much. I don't agree with that at all. You know, if you're hitting the miss the right way, you know, like I said, it worked for Floyd because the way Floyd fight, Floyd is such a defensive fighter and is so quick that, you know what I'm saying, he, he he keep his punches real short and sharp. So I think that's what the mitt work that he used, that's what he used it for. But the mitt work is for other fighters. You probably, you know, a lot of fighters can't fight like that. So you got to throw strong, long shots, you know, combinations. And it's a good, it's a good mitt work. It's a great workout. Yeah, especially if you're, you're using the mitts and you're, you're working for, you're working towards a fight, and yeah. you know you gotta throw a certain punch that like for like a, like a half up or something. That, but you but the guy keeps the elbow down or something. So yeah, you know how to where that punch is gonna go. You know what I mean? It's you know you put that because that punch is gonna go. It's not gonna it's gonna it's not gonna fit in there if you throw it like this. But if you throw it like that, it's gonna work. Yeah. Yeah, it's, right. it's definitely work. It's definitely a good, good, good thing to you. <clears throat> you know, these, these people that do this shit all day. Yeah, pinning you behind the back. I know you. But <laughs> 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 turn around behind the back, underneath. Yeah, that you ain't gonna never get nobody that that this you gonna fight that's gonna be right there for that. You know what I'm saying? So, but you know, like I say, it look good. You know, it yeah. look good. So you punch fucking face a couple times, they'd be like, hold on, wait, wait, wait. All that shit gone. All like, that. Yeah. Man, are you, are you, um, Wink, are you, are you at all interested or possibly going to do any, any exhibitions? Who? You. Hell. You. Nah, listen, man, they, unless they come to me and make me off, I can't refuse, like the mob, <laughs> I'm out, man, I ain't got time for that, man, I ain't listen. Boxing was a great thing for me. I had a great career. You know, I got to fight almost everybody I wanted to fight. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it, it's time, you know, when it's time to end, it's time to end. You know what I'm saying? We got to make room for these young kids, these young fighters coming up, and they, they need to do what they need to do. Uh, like I said, now, if I get be able to fight somebody, like, I'm going to tell you, if there's one fight I would come back, win that time, cause I, have a, I, have a, I would have to train and all that, but it would be uh -huh. an Oscar De La Hoya fight. Other than that, Ooh. Uh, he's know he's coming back. He's back. Yeah, now. I know that. He's training. He's training and all that. But, you know. He's he not going to fight you. He ain't saying my name, so I'm good. Nah. So, right now, I'm at a real disadvantage right now because I ain't been doing no boxing. See, they, you know, they've been in the gym training and all that. I ain't been doing. All I've been doing is playing golf, man.
if he didn't want to fight you then, he sure as hell isn't going to fight you now. Well, and now, you know, he I guess he figured I'm old, he old, you know what I'm saying? It, it's a different thing. Back then, you know, we were, we was hungry, young and hungry, and, you know, we wanted to be that, that, that line at the top of the mountain, you know what I'm saying? And he knew that I wasn't, I was, I, that's what I wanted to do. I was going to go through anybody to get there, so. You know. Did, didn't he straight up tell you one time, like, he doesn't want to fight you? Yeah, he just was like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just don't want Yeah, he just like, he just don't want to fight me. You know what I'm saying? It's a difficult fight. But I was just like, man, look, the fans will love it, man, because, you you know, you, the fans love you no matter what. And I'm, I'm, I'm that person that I got my own fans. You know, back that time, I was, you know, I was rocking all, all the, all the black fans was, was, was rolling with your dog. We had a great time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we was taking uh -huh. over. <laughs> <clears throat> So, oh, so quick question. You ever in the amateurs? I think Oscar fought thirty-two. What'd you fight? Or I fought 20? thirty-nine. He fought twenty-five. He fought twenty-five. He fought, fought thirty-nine. Yeah, I fought thirty-nine. I was thirty-nine. I fought little. Let me see. Little, <clears throat> little, little, little Tyrone Millett, um, little uh, Stevie Johnson. Uh, I forgot who else. Some more, you know, like, but I only was amateur for two years. I was, I, I, I started boxing when I was 16. I turned pro when I was 18. So, I, yeah, yeah. I, and I, you know, I went to three nationals. And when I, when I, when I won the uh, Olympic festival, when I won the gold medal at the Olympic festival, when I beat Stevie Johnson and he was number one. And then they told me they weren't going to let me go to the Goodwill game box off. I was like, what? I, I just beat the number one, number one and the number five guy. I forgot that it is a Spanish kid I beat. So I beat them two for the uh for the for the gold medal and they said, you know, Pat Knapp and them was like, uh, you know, you ain't got that much experience. I'm like, I done fought overseas, I fought against other countries, so you know, I just beat these two. So why why shouldn't I at least go to the box off? They ain't even give me an invitation to the box off, so I turned pro. You didn't fight Pepe Riley, did you? Pepe Pepe Riley? What no, no, who is Pepe Riley? I heard of Pepe Riley. Who is Pepe Riley? I don't think I fought Pepe Riley. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, he, he was, he was, a, he was, a, he was, a, he was a ghost on our team. Yeah, he, no, no. one show, and you know, what I mean, he was like that. But yeah. I mean, he could fight, but he was just more, he was more of a ghost on our team. Yeah, no, no, I didn't fight Pepe Riley. I fought, uh, I forgot another Spanish kid. Uh, I don't know, man. Like I said, back then, it was, it was just so new to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I just, I started boxing when I was 16, turned pro when I was 18. And it was just like, you know, fight, fight, fight. Back then, we was fighting like every weekend, two, three fights. Every, you know what I'm saying? That's, it was just fun. I was just liking it. It was just, you know, was fun. Good. Learning. You learning. School of hard knocks. You learning that way. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't all this, you know, picking fights, picking. No, I was learning. Whoever they got in front of you, you got to fight them. And that's what we did. We learned in Florida. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I dominated Florida. And then we went to the Nationals. Then I got to the quarterfinals the first time. Lost. Then I got to the... Did I get the semis? Then I got the semis again and lost, and then I won the um that uh that the gold medal. So you know it is what it is. I had fun, like I said, I take nothing away. It's a learning experience. I think a lot of fighters should go through the amateurs because you you really learn how to fight. You learn you know what to do, what not to do, when to do it. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just a good learning experience. No, I think it's a great one. It's a great yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I think some I think some amateurs may stay amateur too long. Because I feel that you lose, you lose a lot of your your aggressiveness. You lose a lot of your spunk, and, and you leaving it in the amateur because it's a totally different game from the pro game. And, you know, it's more pity pat, you know, more scoring punches than when you get in the professional. It's about trying to knock your head off. So you know, a lot of fighters stay amateur too long. I, 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 I was getting ready to say the exact same thing. <clears throat> yeah. You know, the, I I know I fought amateur for fucking forever, you but you know. Started when I was little. Oh yeah, yeah. See, so, you know, like you know, I, it was no choice for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah you was, you was, you was, you was a beast, dog. I ain't gonna. I'm. A, I told. I tell everybody. I said that nigga was a beast, boy. He was. <laughs> he was. He was a beast in the amateur man. I'm telling you, man. He was like Mike Tyson, red light skin dude. He, he, he said. He said. He said. He did a good job for the light skin dude, dog. Cause you was knocking heads off. I like. <laughs> dude, he punched harder than a motherfucker, man. This yeah, dude was knocking people head off and amateurs with the head gears on. Boom. I know. I was like, "Who is this dude, man?" And then you know, I, I turned pro and I let, I ain't really pay attention <laughs> to the amateur game. And then I seen him later. Yeah, your first pro fight, how much they paid? Four or five hundred bucks? Yeah, yeah, I got paid nothing. Yeah, something like that, eight hundred bucks, something like that. 
But it was it was for me, you know, I was just like I said, I was eighteen. So they gave me some money to turn pro, then they paid me every week. Plus, you know, I was fighting once once or twice a month. So I, I got to like twenty I got to like twenty four fights in like a year and a half, two years. So shit was just crazy. You know what I'm saying? And then it was just like, okay, now, you know. <clears throat> but everything happened for a reason. You no, know, people gotta take different different roles to 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 establish you, or to, you, to get what, what they want. What part of your 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 whole boxing career, the two years in amateurs and the and the professional years, if you could change one piece of it, which one would you pick? You know, look, this or that. Or none, 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 none. 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 I listen, man. I enjoy everything. I enjoy going overseas, earning earning my 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 position in the top ten. I I I I love the amateur part of it because it was more of a. a more of a, a shock to me to, to see that they can control what, what 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 happens. You know what I'm saying? If they don't want something to go down, they can control it. Because back then it was like Pat Nappy and the, the Olympic people, they can control whatever. So, you know, that let me know right then, listen, don't be sitting around waiting to go, you know. I wasn't even going to go pro. I, was, I wasn't even thinking I was going to be a professional boxer. So, really? you know, for me, no, I was just doing it for the fun of it, man. Look, I moved from Washington, D.C. when I was – I moved here when I was 15, about to go turn 16. I was like two months before I turned 16. So I moved here, and then a kid in my school told me about a boxing club. I was playing basketball. I was going out for basketball, and then I was living in the wrong school zone in Florida. If you live in the wrong school zone, you can't play basketball in that, in, at that school. So they told me I couldn't play basketball. So a kid was like, man, yeah, I box it. You know, little white boy. I was like, oh, yeah, you box I'm saying to myself, I can whoop you right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had that mentality. So it was like, okay, you know what? He told me where it was at, and it wasn't that far from my house. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go by there. And then, shit, I went by there like the next day, two days, looked at him, and that's my only trainer. That trainer who I started with, the trainer who I ended with. I had one trainer, Dan Birmingham. I went in there. I was like, man, I like this. He's like, yeah, you want to fight? Come on back. You know what I'm saying? Everybody always say they want to fight until they get hit. I was like, all right, well. And the rest is history. So what what part of the learning process was the What what? Say that again? What part of the the learning process was the hardest for you? For me, the the hardest part for me was <laughs> running. <laughs> I hate conditioning, running. Conditioning, dog. Listen, man. You know, I, I can all see back in the day if you if you can ever find film of me when I was in younger, I was always I was a slick fighter, quick move. You couldn't hit uh -huh. me. It was more of, you know, they I wasn't worried about them hitting me because they couldn't hit me. It was more of not getting tired throwing punches. So, you know, that was my thing. Learning how to pace myself, learning how to condition my shoulders, learning how to condition my body to throw them punches, learning how to take the punches. You know, once I did that, my 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 confidence level just went through the roof. It was like, man, I'm a I'm a bang anybody. I ain't care who they put in front of me, and that that's that's the mentality I had. Which fight was it that that I think I think you said Vargas when we talked, but which was the one where you where you started just putting the hands up and going forward? Vargas, that was Vargas. Yeah, that was that was just and that changed. That was the night. That that was the day of the fight. It, you know, I ain't you didn't plan you know, it. I I planned my fight. We we box. We stick and move because you know we knew he was a good puncher. My, that was my thing. But they were just talking trash. Him and his little brother was talking trash. You know the whole little thing, and it, we just got he just got under my skin, on my nerve. I was like, I'm gonna hurt this dude. I'm hurt. This. And you know, like I said, I'm cool with Vargas now. Man. I like him. You know, I had, I had a lot of bitterness towards him after the fight, but I gotta realize, you know, it wasn't him who took the fight. It was the judge. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So you know, I had to, I had to finally, you know, realize that what it was, and you know, what I'm saying I, I I got nothing but respect for him. You know, what I'm saying, and you know, that's what it was. It, it is what it is. Yeah, like speaking yeah. of that, you had so many of those fights that you got robbed. Yeah, yeah. How did you? How, how did you like like mentally get over that shit? Because it kept happening I, I, over and it, over. It, it, I didn't. I didn't. It was just like you know, to me, it was kept saying, "Listen, they keep they keep trying to stop you from from achieving greatness." So you know, only thing you can do is just keep coming back at them. Every time they shut the door, kick it down. Every time they shut the door, kick it down. And that's what I did. So when they would rob me, they had moved me back a couple of spots. So I'd go from number one. Because, listen, I didn't get a championship fight until I, I became number one. I was number one across the board when I first mm -hmm. got my first title. So, you know, I didn't get a chance. I, I never got a title shot until I became number one. So then once I became number one again, they pushed me back or whatever. 
Then I beat, I beat everybody in front of me. I beat all the people in front of me. Whoever would fight me, I beat them. I beat them. Then after a while, they stopped. The people in front of me stopped fighting me. So then I, I get to get to that point where I had, they had to move me up. And once I got number one, the champion either gave up the belt or they, 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 they fought me and, and, and they didn't want to fight me. So that's how I won my my second title. Uh, I won IBF first. My first title, I won the WBO against Bronco McCart, who who was at that time was a hell of a fighter. You know, he mm -hmm. was from USA. They was they was they was he was their poster kid. You know what I'm saying? Bronco, good dude, man. And he fought me three times. You know what I'm saying? And I, you know, I always I always holler at him. We still cool with each other. You know what I'm saying? It just it was was nobody wanted to fight him. Nobody wanted to fight me. So I had to beat him. And then once I beat him, they kind of gave me that 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 carrot. What up? We should we should get Bronco on the phone, man. I mean. <laughs> I, I totally forgot about that. He's from Michigan. Yeah, yeah, that's my dog. He a good dude, man. Bronco, a good dude, man. I like him, man. That's what we like, good people, man. That's yeah, that's right. all. Listen, man. Listen, man. We do stuff. <clears throat> we do stuff that you know. what I'm saying, even though we fight, we still respect each other. You know, I I respect you if you long as you ain't doing no crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. But when you're doing that crazy shit, then I don't respect you. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, we just you talk a little trash. I talk a little trash. Okay, cool. But after the fight, man, it's, it's nothing but respect. You know what I'm saying? And then, like I said, to the like to the man who really gave me my my really boost into the to fame is is Sugar Shane Moses. You know what I'm saying? I gotta give it up to Shane. He was he was a bad man at the time. Beat De La Hoya twice. You know what I'm saying? So you know people yeah. try to take away from what Shane accomplished. Shane was a beast, man. Shane was beast. So you know he came yeah. up and he fought, and I I just you know it was just my time, man. And we fought. You we fought again. you something you handled him so easily. It was, it was just, I, you know, like I say, it was it was like I had got robbed so many times at that breaking point. It was like, I'm not letting them rob me no more. I'm going, tonight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win or I'm going to die. So, somebody, I, remember, right? I, huh? knew, I knew it before the, before the fight. It was your style, man. Yeah. Very clean, very tight. And, you know, Shane gets a little, a little, Jumping. but he gets, he gets wild to yeah. a lack of a term. But, man, I, I like I remember that, dude. I mean, I mean that. I, I, the, the cleaner that you fought, the better it was for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. When I fought, so like for me, Shane was just more. He more he quick, but he more methodical. It's gonna be a one, one, two, or he gonna jump mm -hmm. in with something. So it was just like, okay, just watch out. He quick, so he gonna try to jump in. So my hands always up. So you know, when like even if he jump in, he wasn't catching me when I, cause my hand was up. So it was like, okay, now once I start seeing this and got his rhythm down, it was like, okay, now I need to just place my shot. You know, he take a good head shot, but I'm gonna hit him to this body. So if you really watch that first fight, I I was hit Shane with some body shots, man. Bam! I'm talking about. I was hitting. He was. Shorty was in shape because I'm saying I could feel my punch like Canelo felt his face. I it felt like I was breaking ribs. I was just boom, boom, and he was just taking. Shorty came, man. I got much respect for Shane Molder, man. How do you? I, I've known Shane since I was ten, twelve years yeah, old. Yeah, they they used they y'all was in the amateur together. I remember. Uh, yeah, we used yeah. to sport a couple times. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you try yeah. to. Fight. He got it, and I would say I got it. So, I, but I just give it. To, I mean, it was the little short, little fast, little motherfucker. Fast little motherfucker, man. In and out, <laughs> in and out, in and out, man. Good little dude, man. How do you, yeah. Wink? How do you think you would have done against Floyd? Uh, you know, I can't say, man. Listen, man. I people, you know, people always ask me. It, it was one time, I guess, somebody, Floyd or me. I, I wasn't one, but I think somebody in Floyd camp was saying they they was gonna fight me at this net and. And I was like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? I, I listen. I love Floyd. I love Floyd. He 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 great for boxing, shorty. He you know he money man, bringing the money to boxing, mm -hmm. and you know. But I think that um, uh, you know, I I would have did put it this way. It wouldn't have been no easy fight. I know that. So it wouldn't have been no easy fight for him, and it wouldn't have been no easy fight for me. But believe that it wasn't gonna be no running. It was gonna be some action. It, it, at that time when I was when I was really young, and you know. Into the, well, I wasn't even young because I ain't really start getting my my just due to. I was like 34, 35. I know thirty two, thirty four, thirty five. So in my in my real heyday when I was twenty some, you know, I man, please. But like I said, you know, it would have been a fight. He would have, I'd have been on him. He'd have had to do what he had to do. And best man would have won. Like I said, I don't, I can't never say what somebody would have did. It would just been a good yeah. fight. There, there is nobody right now out there that could emulate the style that you fought in your career as an amateur and professional. I think, I think, 
I think that you and Oscar, when he was an amateur, man, even pro, very super fucking clean fighters, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, just yeah. Way like yeah, I like, that's what I was like. That's what I was, I wanted to see. That's why I wanted to fight Oscar so much because he had that, he had a good, good jab, good right hand, good hook, you know, but like you say, he's straight, he, you know, clean fighter. So it was more, we got to outthink each other. So who going to outthink each other? Who going who gonna to be able to get that jab off? He had a good jab. I got a good jab. So now, you know what I'm saying? He got, he might have a better right hand than my left hand, but he had a great hook. I had a great hook. See, people always try to say I couldn't punch, but you know that you never seen nobody just running at me because I could punch, but I never went for the knockout because I my thing was, I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to make you, you, you going to say, I don't never want to fight him again. And, you know what I'm saying? That's what I wanted. I wanted to, when I hit you, when I, you was going to say, man, he ain't knocked me out, but this, hey, he hurt me. You know what I'm saying? Well, you kind of, you, you kind of did what, what uh, Pacquiao would do, where you would just hit him with a lot of punches. And yeah, just, yeah, over and over, huh? over and over, over and over. Huh? Especially with the jab, I'm going to bust you, I'm going to try to bust your face up. Which is, <laughs> which is the most irritating shit in the world when your guy's got good rhythm and he's got the, he's caught your rhythm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bam, bam, bam. That jab juice is like, what the fuck? Let me get out the way. <laughs> Can't do shit. Get out the way, man. That's yeah, big. yeah, yeah. And, you know. Like a laser in the fucking man. Yeah. I, who was that? What's the kid's name? Maurice Harris, I think his name? Yeah, yeah. Mo Harris. That beat the shit out of me. I was like, <laughs> yeah, Mo was, yeah, I think Mo was with my people at that time when y'all fought. You know, Dude, my, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Lord, he had I know my, it was just nothing I could do. And he was a good little boxer. He just oh. wouldn't, wouldn't put in. He wouldn't put in the work to keep keep it going, man. You know what man. I'm saying? That I mean that that fight I remember because I was supposed to fight Rockman. Yeah. And then they they, they flipped it up and said, "Oh, you fight this guy." That's and, the worst. That's the worst right there. When you got him, yeah. I was like, I bring him, little skinny man. I'm like. Phew. That motherfucker beat the shit out of me. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. high five! And do and like he was just like e bing, 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 bing. Couldn't hurt me though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I know that's like that's what I felt about uh my last fight, uh Quillen dude. You no, know, I like the kid was real nice dude, man. I like I like I like Quillen. We man. had him he, on our our podcast. We talked to him. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. He it just that. I, my, my time and everything, because it took me so hard to lose the weight, and then when I, I was just depleted, I just, I was kind of shake it off. You know how when you when you can't shake it off, and nothing was going on. Only thing I could do is go to the body a little bit, but, you know, everything was just slow. I was just like, oh, this is going to be a long night. And then, you know, when he caught me coming out, it, he didn't hurt me. He just caught me with the perfect shot, because when I'm going down, I'm looking right out, smiling. I'm like, oh, that was a good shot. So I got right up. You know what I'm saying? But but I but I like the kid, you know what I'm saying? I I, I was hoping he would have did a lot more. He won he won the belt, but some I don't know what happened. He just he's just what um how much weight did you have to lose for that? I oh, mean I had to shit. I had to lose laminate probably thirty pounds, man. I was, I was, I was, yeah, I was man. Listen, I want remember when I fought him, I ain't fight for like a year, a year and a half. So at the end of my career, I couldn't get no fights. Really, nobody really wanted to fight. Nobody worth nothing worth mm -hmm. the fight. So it was just like, man, I was really one. I was only, I was going to stop before his fight. I was just like, you know what, I'm done with boxing. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I was just like, they offered it. I'm like, you know what, this is gonna be my last fight. Either I'm gonna win this or I'm gonna lose this, but I'm done. Well, you were, you were like what, 40, 41? <sighs> you were like 41 in that fight, right? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was 41, man. So it was more of just like, you know what, let me let these young kids do this thing because my timing was off. Once I realized. My time was off, and I couldn't. I I see the punch. I see he open where I can hit him, and usually it just fire off. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like throw, and it's like okay, throw. It's too late now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I need to as soon as I say throw, throw. And when I knew I couldn't do that, but he couldn't hurt me. But it was just like okay, block, block. You know, I was just like you know it's time. <laughs> well, I, hey, go I rather huh? get, go down than get beat up all night. Say that again. I said I'd rather get clipped and go down than get beat up all night. Cause that's yeah. just yeah. I that's see. I'm not. I'm not gonna let nobody beat me up all night. Cause you ain't. You ain't gonna hit me with no lot of clean shots. So you know, it's just more. You just gonna throw a lot of punches. But I'm gonna pick most of them off. So it's just like okay, okay. Just let me get mine. Yeah. Your defense is a whole lot better than mine. I used to live in that store. 
Yeah, nah. you live free, but that's what that's what that's you. That's that's your game. You hit. See, you had that power. The one punch, the lame bit lights out. See, but I, I had that lights out punch. But Jeremy had you had defense, man. That that's right, Wink. Yeah, yeah. Jeremy yeah. has to do. But like he said, he going he going. When you go for the knockout, you leave yourself open. You leave yourself out. in position. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Any, anything, anything that you risk do, the, the whole come back to you. Risk or some you're risking something. Yeah, it can come back. It can come back to you. What do you yeah. What do you think, Wink, about the um the current heavyweight what? situation? What do you like? Uh, what do you about heavyweight, heavyweight situation? Um, man, really, I, I I don't even know, man. I, I I really ain't. I can't lie. I don't focus on the heavyweight situation because it's up and down. You know, Ruiz came back. He looked. He looked. Shot with quick little punches, but uh, your boy looked good with it, 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 the one two. But it's just like once he couldn't land that right hand, that overhand right, it was over for him. So he got be able to, you got be able to do different things. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you think uh, any, it's you think anybody could beat Tyson Fury? Well, you know, if they come to yeah, I think I I really I really do. It's just that you know Tyson Fury. In his heart, he, you know, when you believe that you can't be beat, you believe that you're the better fighter. A lot of times, you're going, you're going to excel. But if you, if you got doubt, doubt in your heart, doubt in your mind, it's, it's hard to, for you to do what you need to do. And he don't got no heart. He don't got no doubt right now because he, he won, you know, and he feels like he can win. He can beat anybody. He's that, like that. Once you get that in your head, yeah, you're the champion. Yes, man. It's a new level. It's a new thing now. You got the you got the killer brother to beat him. Yep. Yeah. yeah. What it is. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's true. But then I I feel like man, you give my give me you give me the charger. I need the plug. Get my phone going. My bad. My bad, fellas. I just really looked at my phone. Like, oh shit, my shit going. Oh, right. Um. What was I saying? Oh, I was saying yeah. Like, but then you look at somebody like Deontay Wilder, right? He didn't lose. He was knocking everybody out. And then the yeah. first fight he lost, he just couldn't accept it. Yeah. You know what but I mean? Yeah, you know, that's how it is. When you're a bully, you know what I'm saying? Not saying he's a bully, but I'm just in the in the in the, in the different standpoint. You're a bully, you you get in your way with everybody, then you feel anything you do is gonna work because you know that okay, all I gotta do is hit him with his right hand. But eventually you're gonna fight that fighter that know how to get away from that right hand, that know how to fight inside, that know how to jab, that know how to move. And now you're going to have to fight. And that's, you know, that's all it was. You know, I still think Deontay Wilder is a very good fighter, great puncher. He needs to learn how to fight inside. And he needs to, that's what he needs to learn, how to just fight inside, be able to block shots. Thank you, baby. He needs he's, to be being, able to he's being trained by uh, Malik Scott now, I think. Oh, yeah, I know little Malik, man. Malik, good dude, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? know? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know, yeah. I know Malik. He's yeah. a great Really smart, knows knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was a heavy heavyweight boxer. Yeah. yeah, he was a real good slick boxer. And the you know boxer. What I'm yeah. yeah, but 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 but, but De Deontay need to honestly, he somebody need to teach him how to fight inside. Because with the power he got, if you learn, if you got a good defense where you can learn how to pick shots and block shots, and you got that power, it's gonna be hard for you to get beat. You know doesn't what I'm saying? He, doesn't he seem though like? His power has to come at the end of his punches, or am I wrong? Man, yeah, that he he he, hey, his punch, his power is all over, man. He hit people, you know, you know that right hand is is a, is a beast. But like I said, you got to be able to land it. You got to work hard. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Wink, you, what you, up? Hey, Corte, did I fight? Jeremy, yeah, come I, a little closer because you keep cutting out. Oh, yeah, I said, yeah, I beat I Corte. Yeah, somebody asked Carlito asked that question, so I was just oh yeah, yeah. okay, okay, yeah, Carlito, yeah, I fought I caught ten in Tampa, uh, and I beat him uh over over ten rounds, twelve rounds, he might be twelve rounds. He actually 12. had the similar cover in his face like you do, similar, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so you know back in the day, so me and Ike had the same promoter when I was overseas. We both was promoted by the Curse Brothers, so I was there when Ike won his first title. You know what I'm oh, saying? Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we were, you know, he was part of my team. We were part of the same team, and we we always fought on a lot of same cars, and you know, always, I always liked with them. And you know, what I'm saying it was just at the time when when we fought, it was just that what the people want to see. So you know, I give them what they want to see. You you ever fight in Africa? 
Yeah, I fought in Africa one time. I fought, so that's one of my losses. So I fought in Africa, and I, they called a fight a draw, which they it was no draw. So I, so the kid was tough, but I was I was banging him, working good with him, throwing good shots. He was throwing good shots, but they kept trying to take the point away from me for going low. They did take the point away from me for going too low to the bottom, but I was catching with body shot, but they kept saying they was low. So I was like, okay. So then I had to stop going to the body. Now he's running in. But, you know, anyway, go to 12th round. They call the fight a draw. You know, they wait for about 20 minutes before they call it a draw. Finally, they call the fight a draw. So I keep my title. You know, I had the WBO belt at this time. So I go back to my dressing room. I change. And then uh, when we when we leave, about to leave out, they come into my dressing room and say, hey, we need you to come back to the ring. I'm like, come back to the ring? For what? Shit, everything over with it. Uh, we, we, changed, uh, we made a mistake. Uh, you lost. Like, I lost. How the Listen, how, come on, this is how corrupt boxing Damn. is. Really. Listen, how the fuck can you not, you got to be the dumbest person in the world. You only 12 rounds. Count the fucking rounds. If you can't count the 12 and say who won, you's a dumb or you don't need to be no judge. And I know the judge, <laughs> that, and I know the judge that changed their, their decision. I know, and you know, I'm not going to put her out there, but it's a woman judge. And they put pressure on her, made her change her score. And then she changed the score and said, I lost. So that's how, that's how I lost my WBO title. But once again, see, I said, God is good, man. God, you know, that happened for a reason. So that, that allowed me to come back and, and now come back home and, and focus on, you know, becoming a world champion in the U.S. And that's what I did. So, you know, God worked in mysterious ways and, you know, Thank to that judge for, for doing that because now she, she allowed me to become a first ballot Hall of Famer. You know what I'm saying? Oh shit! <laughs> so oh, I was, shit. that judge, the judge, you know who you are, and I'm not gonna put you out there like that because it's so long. But but thank you, I appreciate. It. Well, there's only yeah. two female judges <clears throat> that are known to be pretty bad, so it must be one of the two of those. But well, it could be who? What the two you know? Uh, Adelaide Bird or what? Letterman, right? Well, it's one of them. I know. <laughs> I'm going to leave that there. But thank you again. They they definitely, you know, they blessed me to become who I am today. Yeah. Um, have you seen um have you seen this fighter named uh Jerron Boots Ennis? Oh yeah, sure. I just saw his fight uh not too long. Yeah, he just fought not too long. What's weight, right? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah motherfucker's bad, nice. bad I like, right? I like him. I like him. I like him. Ooh. So you know, right now. You know they the the world ways they got to get back out there and start fighting. At one time I was like I said I was loving Terrence Crawford. He you know he was fighting everybody, knocking them out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know my man is Keith Thurman. You know my my gym mate, my 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 my, my little dude. But he got he got to get back out here and start fighting, get his name back out here and, and do what he do. He lost to Pacquiao. He, it's not bad to say he lost to Pacquiao, and he fought a good fight. If Pacquiao don't knock him down the first, he yeah. beat Pacquiao. He beat it was Pacquiao. Close. He gave Pac he gave Pacquiao all he wanted. Pacquiao, he banged Pacquiao up too. Pacquiao felt that power, so the kid got to get back out here and start fighting. You know what I'm saying? Why is he not fighting? What's going on? He's injured or what? It, no, no. It's it's it, my from my outlook. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? It's something to do with with, with his promotions. Uh, you know, he with Al Heyman and them, and you know, right now they keep. From what I'm hearing, they keep telling me, you know, they don't got no fight for him. They don't got no date for him. But everybody else fights. So that's, that, don't, that don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? When he was the man, you know, he could fight when he want. You know, they would make sure he had a date. But now that he lost the Pacquiao, you know, he didn't get no fight. So, you know, boxing is crazy. Yeah, the welterweight division is stacked. I mean, there's a yeah, lot yeah, of good you gotta get, and, and you're not getting any younger. You know what I'm saying? I wish I could have had these fights when I was at that age, from 25 to 35 getting you know getting all the best fighters at that man please man but you know were you i mean you had every fight you wanted except for oscar right yeah but listen at that time when i was when i was 25 to 35 you know i'm on i'm beating all my number one contenders you know what i'm saying so none of the big names wasn't coming you know what i'm saying so i'm, I'm just beating all them ones all them ones all them ones you know what i'm saying so i'm keeping myself sharp but you know they got the chance to to make to do some 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 Sugar Ray Lennon, Marvin Hagler, you know, Duran, you know, all Hitman Hearn, that kind of stuff. Because you got them kind of fighters in, in your weight class. And, you know, so what? See, one thing I, I think what these fighters get uh, mixed up at where, you know, they scared to take that challenge that, that they might lose. But, you know, sometimes a loss can make you become a better fighter. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes a loss can make you 
understand what you didn't do that caused the loss, and now you can go back and change it. Now you can become great, you know. So, and you know, it's only gonna be a few fighters that that able to retire undefeated and fought everybody, you know. Andre Ward, Floyd, uh, 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 Rocky Kyle Zaggy, Kyle Zaggy. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know about all that back in them days. You know, they could have been had people. You know, hey, you better not win this fight. You know, <laughs> so the mall. There was a, another dude that nobody ever brings up. Uh, Ricardo Lopez was that his name? Oh yeah, yeah. fifty-one Ricardo? and zero, right? Uh, no, not fifty-one and zero. Yeah, it was fifty oh uh, fifty-one zero oh, and one. It did, man. Well, like so we I had that, that one draw. So they don't put him in small, the smaller weight class. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah, one hundred five, yeah. I think. Yes, yeah, Jeremy, you know who that is? I know who he is, but yeah, he's little, like tw he's like a twelve pounder. He said one hundred six, yeah. I think. One of the twelve. One hundred six, one twelve, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was? Good. What um? What? Hold up. Hold up. It's a Go lot ahead. of good. It was a lot of good young. I mean, lightweight fighters, man, but. The one that always stand out to me is 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 uh him my name just went out of my mind. Uh hands of stone, little hands of stone. Carbohol. Lord have mercy. Carbohol. We talked to him. Carbohol. We had him on our show. Man, little hands of stone, man. That little dude was knocking people out, man. He had Jeremy power as as a as a, a lightweight, flyweight, whatever he was. Yeah, he had the little the tail yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, Michael Carverhall, man. Shorty was knocking people out, man. I, I, he was a beast. Also, yeah. um, Prince, Prince Nassim. Oh, yeah. Now, so then, little Prince Nassim was a funny little dude, man. So I fought over. So then, that's when I was fighting overseas, bringing my name up. So I would be on his undercard. I'd be on him, Nigel being undercard, uh, Steve Collins. It was just different people undercard. I was, you know what I'm saying? Because uh -huh. they was the main event, but I was the co-main event because I was that I was the American that was beating all the European fighters. So I was uh -huh. all in number one fight. I would tan them up. So you know, me and me and me and little Prince was cool, man. He, he's a funny little dude, man. He's funny. Yeah, funny little dude. He wild little dude, man. Yeah, he, he seems like he would be a nothing but a buck energy. Yeah, he a, he a, he he a nut, man. He's a he's a funny little dude, man. I like him. He uh, one time I'm gonna tell you this. So we came to um, we we had to go to I want to say it was the WBO convention in in California. So we had to go to the convention. So he was there, I was there. So we was hanging out. So then uh, we see uh, so we see Oscar. So Oscar tell us uh, Oscar tell us uh, hey, I'm gonna have a party back at my house. You know what I'm saying? After the convention. So y'all come on back to my house. We are gonna party. We're like cool, cool. So uh, we wind up not going because one of uh, one of one of his homeboys. He was talking about, well, I don't want to go because all the girls going to go for Oscar. I said, nigga, <laughs> if there's 20 girls in there, Oscar can't have all 20 girls. Come on, man. So you ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like he was just doing. But anyway, so listen, we so we had the, uh, so now we had the WL convention. So no, we had the mall. And so me, him, and his homeboy, and one more, one of my homeboys. So we in the mall. So some little Mexican walk, was walking by, say, uh, he was like, yeah, you ain't you ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. I seen this man. I seen look up. So now we ain't we in LA now. So we, you know, I'm like, so he like, what? Come over here and say that I knocked your ass out like that. Then I just kept going. I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chill out. <laughs> Listen, I said, we in Cali. You ain't got no scrap. I ain't got no scrap. So we ain't, ain't nobody doing no fighting. So you better chill your ass out. Man, fuck uh -huh. that. I'm gonna knock it. I said, dog. So he a wild little dude, man. <laughs> it was it was crazy. That was Prince you're talking about. Prince Nassim Hamid. He, he, you bring that story up to him. <laughs> wow. You better get that guy. He, I would love to talk to his ass. Yeah, I yeah. Know. He a wild little dude. He's not wild. Wow. out, man. Shorty had the aqua style and just pow. Lean all oh. over the back. And, man, yeah, tough yeah. little dude, man. Yeah, his, his, his punches, man. You don't even... It didn't even... It made no sense how he generated so much power the way he threw it, right? His legs is big. Nigga had little. He had some big little legs, man. But yeah, he was. Yeah, he was, man. He get awkward down. I used to see him get hit and all that, leaning back. But then he just when he catch him, it was lights out, boy. Oof. Lights. It out. was. Like, it was. It wasn't nineteen though. That was like twelve. Eight, eight, what's it? What weight? Twenty five. Oh, nah, twenty five. Yeah, he was twenty five. Yeah, 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 featherweight. Yeah. That's still. He was. Yeah. He was the first featherweight I could think of that really. 
brought attention to the division, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah. He, I remember him and Kevin Kelly fought. That was a good fight. Kevin was in the fight. Kevin was ten, but he he he, he hit Kevin. Yo, I was I was at that fight because you know I'm from New York. It was at the Garden. I was at yeah. that fight. Half of the Garden was British fans, right? Yeah. Half was was New Yorkers. Every time one of them went down, you would see half the place stand up, the other half sit down, and the shit yeah. kept going back and forth. Yeah. Like that. Listen, that was crazy because I was I fought a, I fought a title fight in in Europe that same that same date. So I fought, and then I went back to my room. And then I got to come back and watch that fight. And that was a crazy fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good fight. Yeah. Hey, man, that great interview, dude. We love talking to you. Hey, it's all We're gonna good, my man. Cut it down now because we got – I got to eat. I'm I'm starving, dude. Yeah, I just I just came from eating, so I'm good now, man. So, what you eat? Uh, man, I told my girl, we went to a seafood restaurant. You know what I'm saying? She wanted Ooh. some crab legs and all that kind of stuff. So. What's wrong with that, bro? Good. Yeah. Thanks yeah, for talking to us, man. Let's do it again. It's all good, man. We'll get together. Y'all be safe, man. Much love. All right. Appreciate all, right, all the fans out there, man, that, that typed in, man. I you know, I appreciate all the love, man. And uh, you know, let's get ready for this new generation of fighters, all right? Let's, let's watch. Peace. Y'all be peace, man. Peace.